has disappeared in the most economically sustainable manner possible using the modern technology. It is current and future, it is present and continuous. It will assist in achieving modern farming methods, which is the main objective. So it definitely achieves these three, um, these three as I have mentioned. That is a mission statement. Now, a vision statement, we didn't have this question, but let me just repeat it because it is important. And I, um, if you don't understand uh, how to write a mission, a vision statement and an objective by the end of topic one, I believe you have not learned entirely what you should have learned by the end of that topic. So a vision statement on the other hand, one, it is futuristic. It speaks about the future. If it has a tense, it is a future tense. Um, it is futuristic, so it's not present, it is futuristic. Another characteristic is that more often than not, it will have a time limit. It could be a specific time limit or not a specific time limit. Now with these two, it has other features, like, like it, it drives you towards a certain direction uh, as opposed to a mission which motivates, but um, a vision drives. Let me give an example. If you ask to go to Machakos on foot from Nairobi, what you have been given is a direction. That is a vision. You have been told Machakos is the, is the direction. So it drives you towards that side. But what you have not been motivated on your journey. If you are told that during the journey, you can buy some fruits, you can buy water and some drinks as you walk, that is a motivation. That's the difference between a motivation, which is a mission, and a drive, which is a vision. Now, but let me just eliminate this to avoid a bit of confusion and focus on futuristic and time limit. Because it is futuristic and has a time limit, it will mostly begin with the words to be, to be the best in farming, in modern farming methods, to be something. So it will more often than not begin with the words to be. That is the most, um, the most distinct characteristic about a vision statement. Objectives is where I thought most people in this class would have problems. However, I am glad that you are able to hack it out. The question is as follows. Um, let me now stop sharing that and start uh, go back to sharing the my screen in the in the, the online screen. It should be coming to you now. The question is, your county government is in the process of promoting the use of modern methods of farming. Suggest one objective. This is Bonis's objective to project this one, to maintain, sorry, to maintain sustainable production system of up to 90% without damaging resources and the environment to achieve agroecological equilibrium through the reduction in the buildup of pests and diseases through modern methods of farming by Vision 2030. You can see my comment here, this one here below. Let me copy this and show you why this is a, this is a good objective. Uh, my page is hanging. Let me just copy and paste um, in the Word document and then bring the word document to you now should be coming to you now i have pasted his objective this is his objective let me put it in a different color so that it's more visible i think yellow will do fine Yes, that's more visible now. To maintain um, uh, an objective has to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and either a time bound or time limit. Let me use the word time limit. These five form the 
acronym SMART, S-M-A-R-T. Majority of you also did a good work here. However, you are either missing time limit or the measurability aspect. The projects you're doing may have caused you to write um, the, the objective the way you wrote it, because I believe that in the projects you're doing together with your supervisors or that you're supposed to begin doing if you've not yet started, they, you are required to have an objective but in that in that uh, project research project there are certain things that are sure one of the things that is certain is um you have a time limit we know about the time limit by the time you're finishing your last exam of this semester which is around should be we can we can say it's around 27th of august there by the time you're finishing your final exam in, by 27th of August, you should have submitted your final project. Or well, that is the day you should submit your final project. Uh, because that, to you, will be the end of the semester. So um, we already know the time limit. That is why you're not putting time limits in your objectives in the research project. But in an objective like this one, you are supposed to give us the time limit because you are the creator of that. The measurability aspect is, the, is what you... Uh, we are really looking out for when we are supervising you in your projects. And so his measurability aspect is this one, the 90%, that you can actually measure 90%. Um, this is the vision 2030 is his time limit. So most of you had to maintain sustainable production system without damaging. So you actually skip of up to 90%. So it's easy to measure whether we have got up to 90%, and it's also easy to measure whether we have done so by Vision 2030. So the rest, I think you are doing well in it. Most of his specific to, main, to sustainable production system is just not sustainable system. It's a sustainable production system, which is specific to, to production. Attainability and realistic is a question of logic. More often than not, it's a question of logic just to check, is this logical? Is the whole objective logical? So I would say, as you're writing your objective, be keen on ensuring this a percentage or moving from 10 to that. You can say um, that the number of, if, if it is modern farming, a question of modern farming of mangoes, you can say that um, um, we are increasing production of we target to increase production of mangoes from 200 bags to 250 bags. So that will be, you can measure 250, whether they are 250 by counting. And then you say by the end of 2020. And that that is what we were expected in that question. Um, I would like to go back to the next question. Um, I didn't check actually the performance in this one, but I will um the question is you need to match the strategic management process with the correct activity we have five we have five uh steps in the strategic management process one is environmental scanning two is strategic formulation and then uh, implementation and then monitoring and finally evaluation Yes, Elizabeth, I thought you were asking a question. Um, now, I needed you to, in each one of those five steps, we have a number of activities. So uh, you need to match the correct activity with the correct step. So sharing of resources is done during implementation, Boniface, and, and, and the rest, this is Boniface's work. Sharing of resources, you share resources so that you can use them to implement your strategy. Report writing is done during evaluation because that's when you need a report of what has happened. Updating of the records is done during monitoring. Brainstorming of ideas is in the first, is in the formulation stage. So when you have scanned your environment, when this, uh, after and you're comfortable, so you're moving to strategic formulation, the first thing you do is brainstorm as many ideas as possible. And you say brainstorming is writing down as many ideas as possible in no particular order so that you can see what strategies 
can you actually come up with before you start you know researching on them and then eliminating the ones that are not viable so that is what i expected in that cut and i hope now you are well versed in that and we can move on to today's work um which is not long this should not take us long unless there's a question on that i can see three people with their uh, have logged in using their microphones you can unmute and ask a question regarding a cut and also three people have um logged in using your audios you can also ask a question by using the public chats regarding the cuts before we continue let me give you a second or two to do that right so um let me move on our topic today we are beginning on the core part of of our of our unit um and i'm excited i am because at least this one is interesting for me um uh, i don't know why my my screen keeps hanging hope i'm still audible because my screen is hanging every time I want to start doing something. I think I'll need to restart this. Just give me a second. Okay, now it's fine. Let me share my screen. All right. I hope it has come to you now. I would like to mention this before we even begin on, on this topic. that we have we covered still in topic one three types of strategies operate that are made at the top business and business strategies we gave them many names and operational strategies i don't want to go back to any of these but purchasing strategies are more often business strategies because they are departmental they are only in our departments we apply them only to us guided by our heads of departments so after mentioning that i wish to say that we have six core purchasing strategies that are applied across they are applied across um all organizations all public organizations public institutions like public universities public hospitals ministries and so on um we have six some of them are unique to purchasing but some of them can be applied to any other department in in the organizations so um we have supplier optimization and i wish to focus a little bit on this one because it's unique to us optimization basically means that you're using the best you're using your suppliers your best suppliers to the best. Now, I have put this in brackets. You will find this in the notes attached there, that this is done 
that this is use of your best suppliers than using registered list of suppliers. I also mentioned when we began at the beginning of the semester that I will rely a lot on the information you're learning from other units and that you learned from other units. This, I hope you learned from principles of purchasing or procurement law, either one of the two. Let me remind you, a registered list of suppliers is um, achieved after pre-qualification of suppliers. Pre-qualification of suppliers means that at the beginning of the year, you ask all suppliers in your country or locality to provide proposals of what they can supply in certain categories. How do you do this? Number one, you identify categories that you are interested in. Interested meaning you could buy items maybe in, from the category of stationery, from the category of um, uh, different categories of electronics, of you know medical cover, of, of, of transportation. You could buy a few vehicles. So you identify a few categories that um, that you think you would be interested in. And then you ask suppliers to provide you with proposals in those categories. What does this mean? That in the area, for example, we have identified of electronics, electronics you communicate to all suppliers using an advertisement in the newspaper you ask them whatever you can supply in the area of electronics anybody who can do that please give us your proposals to show what you supply in electronics what are your qualities um, without price without basic price you're just looking at technical issues and and without financial issues so you ask them and then from there you select few notice no you're not selecting one you select a few of the suppliers in each category so you may have five eg5 in one category what you should not have is below three you should not have anything below three in any one category this is a practice that is done. I'm not teaching you theory. I'm teaching you practicals. And this is what happens in organizations every year. So you identify categories. You ask suppliers to provide you with proposals in those categories. And then in each category, you select a few, a minimum of three. What do you call this? You call this, you call this um, a registered list. Let me put that in quotations, a registered list of suppliers. That's what you call it. You call this a registered list of suppliers. Anytime now you will be doing restricted tendering or you will be doing a request for quotations or you will be doing um, Anything other than open tendering. Anything you, okay, anything other than open tendering and two stage tendering. Anything you'll be doing, anytime you'll be doing any procurement in any one of these, using any one of these methods, you will use your registered lists. Now, using your registered list means you're using your best suppliers. You selected the five best, the three best, the seven best, the 10 best. You selected the best. So this is what we call supplier optimization. What advantages does it have? I would like you to go and find out that one. In fact, I will leave this here and move on to step to the next um, to the next uh, strategy, call purchasing strategy. I will not dwell a lot on TQM, total quality management. It's just ensuring that you have quality in every single step of purchasing. That will take you back 
to a topic of quality assurance and quality control that you have done the principles of purchasing all that you're doing so yesterday you had a class uh, let me ask someone who is on what topic were you covering yesterday elizabeth or cindy cindy has disappeared elizabeth what topic were you covering yesterday or anybody who is online what topic did you have in principles of purchasing yesterday so that i see how far i will go into dealing with this thing of tqm quality assurance and quality control thank you Yvonne. okay so if that is the topic you are covering yesterday how you assure quality how you ensure that you have quality in every single step of purchasing is through techniques such as brainstorming specifications you have the right you, you do the right specifications you have standardization um just to mention a few um so how you assure quality is by ensuring that you have the best. I'm sure you mentioned TQM yesterday, or you're going to mention it. So that is also a, a, a strategy that we keep using in the department to ensure that we have the best quality and that we are buying the best from our cast, from our suppliers. Risk management, this is handled by Sikai in supply chain vulnerability. I would like to remind you that a risk, um, you may have used the word certainty. I will avoid using uncertainties in that. I'll say a risk is an unforeseeable event. An unforeseeable event. For example, you could not maybe foresee that purchasing will be affected by COVID-19. That is in 2019. At least in 2020, we had started hearing about it. But in 2019, you could not have foreseen it. And so the plans, the plans of 2020 are usually made in 2019. And so when you are doing your plans, you may not have foreseen that. So that's a risk. How do you manage that? Uh, maybe now you certainly will need to do direct procurement here and there a few times. I'm sure our companies have done a lot of direct procurement now, which definitely will raise corruption cases. But anyway, um, I think they can explain that in one way or another. So risk management, you identify risks and manage them in the department. And that is a strategy that we keep doing. Identify risks, try and manage them. Global sourcing, um, I would like to mention that global sourcing is where most companies find that their local suppliers are not good enough. Some of the reasons, just to mention, uh, of why people do global sourcing is local suppliers are inadequate. They are inadequate in price, they are inadequate in materials, they are inadequate in many ways. Another one could be that um, it is cheaper to import than to buy locally. Maybe it's also you know prestigious. We cannot ignore such psychological reasons and so on and so forth. So that is a practice that is happening now more than ever. Supplier development, I would like to mention this a little bit, and say supplier development or vendor development is a situation where you are improving their ability. You are improving the ability of your suppliers. You are improving their ability. How do you do this? You can do this through training suppliers. You can train them. However, we only train suppliers who we are sure we will use. We can even give them a contract before we train them. An example, um, I'm, I will use farmers, coffee farmers, who are coffee, maybe they are the, the contracted farmers of a certain coffee factory those contracted farmers meaning they have contracts to supply to that particular factory not to any other just to that one for maybe five years then they can be trained so that they produce the right grade of coffee for that factory the one they require 
uh, we remember that coffee has grades or tea leaves has grades and so you can train those suppliers only after you have contracted them there's no need to train suppliers and then they start supplying to your competitors i don't think there is any need to do that so we can improve the ability by training them we can improve the ability by checking their performance you do appraisals on them and then you give them their performance. We have a topic on performance. We will be dwelling more on that. You can improve their performance by benchmarking. You check what other suppliers are doing and ask yours to improve. Just to give a few points on how we can do that. All right. Um, and finally, green purchasing. Nowadays, we have to buy materials that are reusable, decomposable. We have to use packaged that can be used again so they can be repackaged and when we throw materials away we need them uh degradable when we throw them away we need them not to affect our environment negatively so there's a there's a requirement um if you check your public procurement and asset disposal act of 2015 um in the area section 60 that should be section 60 um yes yeah, sections section 60 it actually states that when you're specifying quality to suppliers telling them what to supply you do not leave out the issue of environment so tell them whether the materials you require are reusable repackageable re degradable or decomposable tell them um what you require from them i would like to imagine that is the that is the end because we are discussing purchasing strategies um however i wish to mention something here below uh, I, this what i'm skipping here is just contribution of purchasing to the organization uh, i think that that that's a little bit straightforward i would like to mention generic strategies these are strategies that are general generic means general so these ones means general these are strategies that are general to the whole organization but we still apply them ourselves um there are three cost leadership differentiation and focus cost leadership basically means that a company that a company um, wants to be the leader in price it wants to be the leader in price why? Because it needs to attract new customers. Please note this one. I asked this question to last semester's students in the end of the ex exam. That was last week, but one. I asked them this question, and uh, uh, we, uh, we would like to mention that it was not well performed. I asked them, when do you use cost leadership strategy? You use it when you are attracting new customers. You use it when you want to introduce new products in the market you use it when you want to be easily selected amongst many substitutes when there are many substitutes you can you can lower the your price so that you are easily selected by customers amongst many substitutes you can use it um, when you want to to rebrand your products so that they are easy to identify in the market. And you also reduce your price when you want to gain more sales. That is when you use cost leadership. Cost leadership means that you want to be a leader in price. Differentiation strategy, this one, you use it when you want your products to be unique how do you do this you can maybe change your color you know change your color change the color of items or um, add a new ingredient like let me give examples of blue yeah. band over the last two years they have been telling us they have added omega-6 uh, I hear some people saying omega-6 was already there. So, the, you know, you just add a new ingredient. 
um, when do you use it? When used, uh, when you want, when is it used? Let me just write, when is it used? It is used when you want to increase price your products you want your products to have an increased price so you must add value to it you want your products to be easily identifiable not selected but easily identifiable you want to be unique in the market is also used when there are few strong competitors. And I want to give an example of Safaricom and Airtel. It's, when you think of Safaricom, you think green. When you think of Airtel, you think red. There are few, but strong competitors. When you think of, is it orange or telecom? I don't know why it has landed now, but it has an orange color, sometimes yellow. I don't know the difference. Forgive me for that one, but that is it um it has they all have unique colors strong but few competitors um so increase price of products easily identifiable be unique in the market few but strong competitors let me add a fifth one you differentiate your items when they have lasted in the market for a long time Please remember those. In fact, I will not delete them. I will add them. I will add these to your notes and then reshare your notes. Focus strategy means that you pick a segment of the market, focus on it, and then either reduce price or you make your products unique just for that market. Assuming you have divided your market into Mombasa region, Nairobi region, Kisumu region, you can pick Nairobi region and reduce price for it. Or you have divided your market based on the elderly, the youth, and children. So you can pick the youth and reduce price on it. I like giving an example of Oppo phones. When they were introduced, they had an effect that it is a camera phone. We all know who like using cameras in, in, in the market. And so they were focused on some people. They were not cheap, but they were focused. That is focus differentiation. You are focused and make the unique for certain people um you have focused and made uh, if 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 you're reducing price for certain segments maybe you have reduced price for kisumu's region or mombasa or nairobi region then that is focused cost leadership so that is explained here below i hope it's in more details i will add these a save uh let me add them right now as you watch but i don't forget uh, i have uh, there's a tendency to forget when you're done because we'll be focusing on something else let me just add these ones someone needs to switch off their music joseph mute your mic before i mute it completely I'm highlighting this in yellow just to show it's um, it's what we have learned just now. Joseph, I also noticed is he in Joseph, make sure you give me a call. You've still not mute your mic. I, I might mute it. And when I mute it from my end, it means it will be mute completely. So please just mute it. Moses, you need Joseph, you need to give me a call before he disappears. He has already disappeared. Okay. I don't have your contacts. But that's the other challenge I am having. Let me post it here. Kindly update your e-learning profiles to include two things. There are only two things that we use in the exam to include one registration numbers 
some of you have given us a lot of details but no registration numbers and contacts please don't imagine that your contacts will be difficult to don't imagine that your contacts will be will be bad for you to post them in such a forum it's not bad it's good because look at this scenario where one of us or one of you has has not yet um completed their cut if i had their number i would have called instead of speaking about it in class mohammed edin i don't have his number when i go to your whatsapp group he has not indicated his name as mohammed edin some of you indicate uh, emojis there and, and other things so it's difficult for me uh, to to know who's whose number is who, i only have very few people's numbers I, at least boniface gedaiga has his his name in his status cindy i have her number the rest of you i don't and maybe your who is your class rep by the way let me ask that question who is your class rep Maybe your class rep can help me with some people's numbers. I see two people typing. Hmm. I'm still waiting. I just I just need one name. Uh, and maybe if the part if the class rep is in class, please contact me. Or oh, Daido, you're the class rep. Daido, and you missed a lot of classes in the beginning of the semester. Joseph, you're back. Before before you disappear again, Joseph, you need to give me a call. Eh? Joseph, Letinina Metina. You need to call me at the, okay. after 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 we are through with the big blue button. Okay. There's a there's a lot of information for you that is missing in many places. But generally, the whole class make sure that you update your e learning profiles. You can see your names there your name you can you you can edit just click on your name click on your name and then either on the right or the left side you see edit settings you will be editing your name please add your registration number and your contact in this time if we are in a face-to-face -face class i wouldn't need your contact i would just come to class and ask who is so and so please let's meet outside here after after the class but for now i need your contacts to reach to you i also need your registration numbers it's the most unique item in class your registration numbers not your names because in some places you have written your name as maybe let me pick daido you've you've maybe daido assuming his other name is is daido joyce joy, joyson daido uh ababu assuming it's ababu i'm just i'm just picking names some places it's ababu joyson others is daido joyson so it it is a bit confusing assuming we also have two daidos or two evons it becomes a little bit difficult uh, with that so please update update those registration numbers and your contact moving on uh, i think i'm saying this because i'm actually through that is all i needed you to learn the rest of the information that you'll find below here is just to tell you that uh, when you want to achieve your generic strategies you need to understand these five the threat of new entrants are there new people joining your market are there many substitutes um threat of substitutes but gaining power of customers do power do Customers have bargaining power, and they have bargaining power when they, have, when they have good knowledge of the market. Do suppliers have bargaining power? They have bargaining power when there are few suppliers or it's a monopoly. How is the competition? Are there rivals in, in your area? For vehicles, it, it is very strong. As you know, BMWs and, and Audis, they really compete against one another. And it has it is very it is very serious competition. Safari Combinators competition is is next is we cannot even compete college competition is they are rivals, they are basic rivals. They steal employees, they, they, they poach empl employees from one another. Um they they do advertisements targeting one another, although that has stopped for a bit now because of the court cases ongoing and, and so on and so forth. But um you need to understand those five factors i wish to mention that general 
or genetic strategies were and their factors the five of them that i have mentioned right now this uh, threat of new entrants threat of substitutes those all genetic strategies the current ones that we teach in class they were created by a person called michael porter it's good to mention the author of of that work so i will share the notes um and i am through i i, I want to allow questions and comments before I, I we call it a class um i wish to inform you that i have one or two discussion questions for this class just to test your, your understanding this is topic four organizational strategies for purchasing under the Thank you. 
Um, 
before I answer the questions, uh, I was saying that uh, I hope I hope you are audible. I think I am audible. I think I am. I was mentioning that discussion that we have a discussion forum. It's just one question. I want to test. I want to 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 see your understanding of the today's topic. This is a question on the first. Uh, core purchasing strategy that we have mentioned today, which is uh, supply optimization. So the question I've asked is explain the importance of creating and maintaining a supplier's database. Now, more often than not, a supplier's database is the, register, the, the registered list. So the question is, why is it important? Kindly attempt it. It's just one question. You, 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 can, you can attempt it in five minutes or so, and, and, then, and then you're done. All right. Now let me answer these questions. Daido, Daido, what is uh hi Cindy? You want to ask a question? Okay, your mic was on, but but I thought you were asking a question. Uh yes, you're right, you want to say that focus strategy applies both cost leadership and cost differentiation. When it is applying, when you focus on a group of people, a company focuses maybe on the youth. We call that focus differentiation. Uh, sorry, when it focuses on a group of the youth and then, or the youth and then decides to make a, a product unique for the youth, we call that focus differentiation. But if it focuses on a group of people and then it decides to reduce the the price for them so it focuses on the youth and then decides to reduce just reduce the price for them we call that focus focus cost leadership so yes it is it is right to say that focus strategy applies both but the unique thing is that um it you focus on them and then you either reduce price or make it unique for them uh, but the cost leadership strategy alone does not need to focus on anybody just to reduce the price for the whole market or differentiation make the uh, make the product unique for everybody in the market so that is right any other question okay um Daido, i don't think i have your number I would love to have your number. Just if you were to type it here, I would be glad. I, I need to reach to you, even as, as I ask the other people to remember to update their registration numbers and their contacts. I think Daido, I would love to have Daido's number. Let me check if I do have it. I think someone had given it to me in this class. Unfortunately, I lost my contacts. Okay. Okay, I have, I have his contact. He has just texted me. Thank you. Okay, um, if there is no other question, I would like you to take the remaining time, answer the question in the discussion forum. Also, allow me a, a bit, answer it a little bit fast so that I may have time to comment on your work. Let me take the class register just now before I'm through uh, for those who attended. Mm. This is your class register. This is the 26th. Did I see Asha anywhere? I'm not sure I did. So this is absent. Cindy is present. Daniel is absent. Mohammed is absent. Boniface is in. Did I see Felix? I think I did. Lucy. Omondi was absent. Someone sent me. Um, Maureen. Maureen. Um, apology. Latinina. Joseph was present. Said Malim, I think, was present. Now, which. Maureen Kwamboka. So Maureen Mwende is present. 
Ivon Daido. Okay. Brian, Brian, I know Brian and he has never appeared in Oscar. I should remove this one. Samuel is absent. Ivon. Any questions? Can't get me. Marion, you can't get me. Why? Is there, can, can the rest hear me? Marion. Marion is present. Am I already boy Yvonne? Okay. Then Marion, I think, should refresh her page. Marion, you should refresh your page. Unfortunately, we are even completing. In fact, we are just saying the words of grace. To leave the class. So unless there is no there's any other question. Wish close the class the big blue button. Okay, thank you all. See you.